Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. My name is Adrienne Rona, District Executive of the Hawk Mountain Scout Council. Now today, we are discussing preparing young people for life and taking you through a journey. Today I have with me Heidi Silverman. Welcome Heidi. Thank you, Adrienne. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure to be here. So Heidi, how are you involved in the scouting program? been involved uh, in the scouting program uh, by virtue of our son being a scout since he was in first grade. He is now 18 years old and when he was a Cub Scout you were always sort of on the periphery helping the parent who was in charge but they needed a lot of hand holding and by that I mean going to meetings with them, participating in events, fundraisers, you know, day trips and whatnot. Then when he crossed over to Boy Scouts, uh, they need less hand-holding, but still you need to know what's going on and give them a prod every now and then to keep them on task and uh, be their transporter and meal provider and things like that. But um, I was a very involved parent in the sense that I always knew what was going on. I read everything from council. I read everything from within our troop, uh, everything from within our pack before that, and uh, I attended the first troop committee meeting, which is a parent, uh, meeting for parents only, the very first one for which I was eligible, and I was hooked ever since then. Great. So I see that you are actually wearing the pin of an Eagle Scout mother. Yes. So can you tell us when your son achieved his Eagle rank? Uh, our son achieved his rank in October of 2015, okay. and he celebrated his quarter of honor in March of 2016, so very recently. That's great. That's great. Yes. And is he still involved in the program? Uh, he is not uh, only because of scheduling and timing. He is an athlete in the spring mm -hmm. and uh, finishing up his senior year in high school and he has AP exams right now and there's just a lot of things coming to a head right now so that has prevented him from being more mm -hmm. involved. He, he's there uh, spiritually. Uh, his heart and head are with the troop but physically he just can't be there now. So as a senior it's obviously a very busy and exciting time in yes. his life. Yes, it is. Gearing up for maybe college or trade yes. school. Yes. Awesome. So I would like to ask why you stay involved. Why have you stayed involved in scouting from the time your son was in first grade all the way through high school? I'm happy to share that. Um, and the obvious answer is to feel connected with what he's doing. It gives us time together. It gives me time with his friends' parents, his uh, fellow troop members' parents. It's a different set of people than with whom I would otherwise be associated. It's been fun, really. Uh, to live his scouting journey vicariously. And I like being a hands-on mom, and I like being involved, and I've learned a lot. It's been an education for me as well. Um, I uh, was the advancement coordinator within our troop for five years, and that was really a behind-the-scenes task, but it helped me get to know the boys, um, even on a, a behind-the-scenes level. For instance, they would contact me to make sure they had turned in certain information that needed to be submitted, their blue cards in particular, uh, I always felt that I tried to be approachable to them. It also gave me a sense of going to the council shop mm -hmm. uh, at the Beaver Family Service Center. I developed a rapport with the staff there because I would shop there regularly, at least three, four times a year in preparation for the um, quarterly uh, courts of honor. And really what drove me to get involved is that um, our son's first court of honor in June of year 2008 or nine, he was not uh, recognized for the merit badges that he had achieved, and it was crushing to him. And I felt very badly for him because it was a paperwork oversight. And he uh, was barely, there was barely an effort made to apologize to him, and I felt very badly for him. And so when I stepped into that role, I made it a point, and I prided myself on the fact that I wouldn't have that happen to another boy within the troop, because if they earned something and worked for it, I felt they should be recognized and rewarded on a timely basis. So mm -hmm. uh, that really helped me that I turned a, a negative into a positive for him, because if boys were not able to be at the Court of Honors, I always made a point to drop off their envelopes at their house. I would drive around the neighborhood and the community to make sure they got their envelopes of um, their advancements, their merit badges, um, and miscellaneous awards, just because I thought it was important for them to receive this on a timely basis, rather than, oh, next time I see them, I'll hand it to you. I just thought they should be recognized in a timely fashion. So um, I only know of one case where there was an oversight, and that was just you know a fluke. And I must have 
processed hundreds and hundreds of merit badges and rank advancements. And so I was really proud of my track record that I felt these boys got what they deserved when they deserved to get it. So. So you sound essentially like the ultimate scout mom. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a paperwork kind of gal. And again, I, I prefer being in the shadows. That's, that stuff sort of falls more my wheelhouse and comfort level okay. than um, being more hands-on. Although I have to say, I did go on several camping trips. Um, I was involved in fundraisers, you know, the hands-on mom, uh, slinging hash, you know, yeah. grilling the hot dogs and, um, and whatnot. So, in that sense, I was, uh, I was very involved, but I do prefer being more behind the scenes. Yeah. Well, that shows, especially to our viewers, that it's not just a program for a son and his father. It's a program mm -hmm. that a mother can be a part of as well. And it, it seems like you did a great job integrating yourself in where you felt that you can help the program and help the boys, and you found that fit for yourself within the troop. Uh, that's true, Adrian. but I also stepped outside my comfort level by uh, going on a backpacking trip on the Appalachian Trail. I would have never thought I could carry a pack for a weekend, and I did that, and it was really tough. And so it was um, a challenge to my own physical skills as well. And also, I prefer creature comforts. Uh, I really do, but I tented many times. And, um, you know, that was a neat experience, too, for a lot of different reasons. Um, listening to the sounds of nature um, as you're sleeping, uh, hearing the rain fall on my tent and just crossing my fingers that I had the fly on properly and you know things like that. It just uh, it was a real challenge and I didn't necessarily sleep well but um, I created some great memories for myself. So selfishly it, it was very uh, rewarding to me. That's great. I like to hear when people step outside of those comfort mm -hmm. zones and it's something you were able to do for yourself but you're also benefiting your son at the same time. Well, yes, because he wasn't um, at the age where he was allowed to go on a camping trip without a parent, or mm -hmm. he would have had to been in the care of another parent. And again, it was the, the sort of opportunity presented itself, well, why shouldn't I just accompany him for his comfort level and just so I can learn something too in the process. If, if we're asking him to be educated about the outdoors, then I might as well be educated too, so. Awesome. Now, it seems like you've gone through quite a journey with your son and with your family as a whole. Yes. And we'll actually be speaking with Heidi's husband in another episode. But from your perspective as a mom, as someone who stepped outside their comfort zone and you got to enjoy these things with your son, what is it that has benefited you and your family the most by being involved in the scouting program? I would have to say easily the um, the love of the of the outdoors and nature. It, it I hate to say forced us, but we were in a position where we often went on family hikes uh, at local great resources such as Blue Marsh, uh, French Creek State Park, Noli Forest, and we dragged um, our teenage daughter along with us, who isn't a big fan of the outdoors, but she went somewhat reluctantly, but I think deep down she really enjoyed the family time, the bonding time, listening to the sounds of nature, you know, uh, watching for blazes along the trails. She got something out of it too, and so it was, you know, I don't want to say forced family fun, but there was a, a great element of that involved, and it really has caused me to, um, to appreciate the outdoors a lot more, the leave no trace policies and, and procedures and, and principles, and I have become a big fan of Blue Marsh Lake, especially in their hiking trails, and I've been known to go out there myself. But of course, I follow the principles of uh, scouting. I let someone know where I am, where I'm going to be. Um, I'm equipped with proper footwear and proper clothing and uh, water and um, a charged cell phone and um, you know things that you need to have on an emergency basis just in case something uh, unfortunate were to happen. I, have a, I wear a road ID that identifies me in case uh, uh, I suffer an illness or injury and can't speak for myself. And um, so it really has caused me a great appreciation of the great outdoors. I will never belong to a gym. I haven't belonged to a gym for 20 plus years and it, I prefer exercising outdoors and in any kind of weather, temperature, uh, the whole bit, I'll, I'll take it or leave it, and uh, I usually take it as far as uh, going out in any kind of weather. It's, it just doesn't phase me. I'm properly equipped. I know how to dress for the elements, and I learned that from scouting. It's been a true education. 
That's awesome to hear you say that because we, we usually focus on, okay, we're preparing young people for life. Mm. Well, it sounds like we prepared you for life as yeah. well. <laughs> yes, and I like to say before scouting, I didn't know the difference between a foxhole and a cat hole, but I certainly know now, and uh, I, I'm proud of that. You know, not, not many moms, you might not even know to what I'm referring, but not many moms can, uh, can say that. Yeah. Well, Heidi, it was a pleasure speaking with you today, having this conversation, and I wish you and your son the best in his future endeavors after high school, and we will actually have the treat of meeting with Heidi's husband in a later week to discuss the father's point of view on his son's journey through scouting and what it has done for him. So we hope you continue with us on that journey. Check in again next week for another edition on our Hawk Mountain Scout Council Prepared for Life series. For more information, visit our website, hmc-bsa.org, or call us at 610-926-3406. You can also find us on the People Chronicles YouTube channel.